It is a great wonder to me that Mara should come into my life. I never thought I would meet a man who would understand me as he has. You underestimate your many qualities, my dear. I have always hoped that one day you would meet a fine young man who would match your goodness with his own. And here I have found the goodness, and with it everything else. Oh, Father, don't you think he is the most beautiful man you have ever seen? He is very good looking, my dear. Of course, you wouldn't let that sway you unduly. Oh, no, no. But that is what is so wonderful to me, that he should have everything, everything that a woman could want. And he wants me. Doctor, don't you care to gratify your daughter? You enjoy the idea of making her miserable? I'm resigned to her thinking me a tyrant for a few months. For a few months? Well, for a lifetime, then. She may as well be miserable that way as with you. Sir, you are not polite, well, sir. You argue too much. You push me to it. Dr. Sloper, I have fallen in love with your daughter. I am not the kind of man you would choose for her, and for good reason. I have committed every folly, every indiscretion a young man can find to commit. I have squandered an inheritance. I have gambled. I have drunk unwisely. I admit, I confess, all these things. Mr. Townsend, I am acting in the capacity of a judge, not your confessor. I tell you these things myself, doctor, because I love Catherine, and because I have a great deal at stake. Then you have lost it. No, sir. Just as surely as if you've placed your pittance on the losing number. It is over. You have lost. Don't be too sure of that, sir. I believe if I say the word, she will walk out of this house and follow me. You are impertinent. And may I add, sir, that if I did not love your daughter as much as I do, I should not have put up with the indignities you have offered me today. You have only to leave my house to escape them. Good day, Mr. Townsend. Good day, sir. What has he done, father? What did Mrs. Montgomery tell you? Nothing I did not know before. Mrs. Montgomery, my sister? Yes. What did she say? Have you spoken with her? She paid me a visit this morning on my invitation. <laughs> You see how painful this is for me, Father. Surely you will want me to know your reasons. He is a selfish idler. My sister never told you that. No, I say it. But, Father, I know he loves me. I know that he doesn't. In God's name, Father, tell me what makes you so sure. My poor child, I cannot tell you that. You must simply take my word for it. Father, I can't. I can't. I love him. I have promised to marry him, to stay by him no matter what comes. So he forearmed himself by getting a promise like that, did he? You are beneath contempt. Do not abuse him, father. I think we shall marry quite soon. And it is no further concern of mine. Please, Morris, don't. Please don't. He won't forgive us ever. I know that now. I have good reason to. What reason? My father doesn't like me. My, what an unhappy thing to say. You mustn't think such things. It is true. No, Catherine, your father is disappointed that his plans for you have not turned out as he wanted. He is perhaps hurt and angry at us both, but that will pass. It will not pass. My dear, if I am to be your husband, you must begin to trust my judgment. I do, Morris. That's right. How many times do you think fathers have spoken angrily to the daughters they love, particularly when marriage is the question? He does not love me. Of course he does. Indeed, he must love you very much. Or he would not be trying so hard to protect you. It is only your future happiness he is thinking of. No, Morris, in this one thing, I know I am right. I could not say it unless I were sure. I understood it tonight for the first time in my life. You can tell when a person speaks to you, is it? As if. As if what? As if they despised you. Well, I suppose you will be going off with him any time now. Yes, if he will have me. Have you? Oh, really, Catherine? He, he ought to be very thankful to me. I've done a mighty good thing for him in taking you abroad. Six months ago, you were perhaps a, a little limited, a little rustic, but now you have everything. You have seen everything. You have appreciated everything. You will be a most entertaining companion. <laughs>
I will try to be. Oh, well, you will have to be very entertaining indeed, my dear girl. Your gaiety and brilliance will have to make up the difference between the 10,000 a year you will have and the 30,000 he expects. He does not love me for that. No? What else then, Catherine? Your beauty, your grace, your charm, your quick tongue, subtle wit. He admires me. Catherine, I have been reasonable with you. I have tried not to be unkind, but now it is time for you to realize the truth. How many women do you think he might have had in this town? He finds me pleasing. Yes, I'm sure he does. A hundred are prettier, a thousand more clever, but you have one virtue which outshines them all. What? What is that? Your money, 